can you charge an EcoFlow Delta Pro with hydropower? Short answer is yes, but the long answer is it's not quite that simple. So we'll show you how we do it in this video. And uh, it was a question I had before we bought it. So hopefully we can answer that for you. I suppose we better get on with it. So what is an EcoFlow Delta Pro? It's a box with batteries in, an inverter and a built-in charge controller that you can run your household appliances off. It's got plugs, like standard household plugs on the front. It's got um, ports on the back for a generator that you can plug in to charge it. It's got solar in input. You can charge it from a wall, charge it from a car charging port, I think. So it's kind of a multi purpose box of toys to box of tricks to pro provide you with electricity um, the situation for it is it's the pro version is more like you can charge it and discharge it many times whereas the lower versions seem to be more for infrequent camping use so this one at the minute runs all of our power and has done for quite a while so I have got the hydro system working. It's, power, it's charging the, um, it is charging the EcoFlow, but there are limitations. So I think now I've shown you what the EcoFlow is and does, I'll show you what we've got, the hydro side of things, and then we'll put the two together and uh, show you how it charges. So this is where we collect the water from. We send it all the way from the top of the hill, down these pipes into this turbine here, which usually is spinning, but it's not because I'm talking and you won't hear me over it. And then it goes from that box there, all that is is just a switch, um, through the cable, all the way up to the rectifier that I told you about over there. So one of my first questions was, how could you physically plug one in? How can you get a hydro turbine plugged into the EcoFlow? Because it has loads of connectors like I've shown you. But there's, luckily, this one here, which you can buy, which is the solar converter, and that just plugs straight into the back there. It's by EcoFlow, so this actually is an EcoFlow um, cable. And at the other end of it, it has this splitter, which then splits off to two standard solar connectors. These are just those M, MP4, what are they called? Can't actually see on there. I can't remember what they're called. I'll put them on the screen, but they're standard solar connectors. Um, and that's really great because, I don't think all, but most hydro, well, I think if you buy a hydro generator rather than building it yourself, it's an AC motor and that means you have to convert it to DC. I'll show you in here and then I'll briefly explain outside where it's better light. But the hydro is three phase, comes in one, two, three, and then all you do is you just connect solar connectors. You would connect the cable there and then you just run these and put solar connectors on the end. And then that would just plug straight in so why do you need to change it from AC? So the generator where the turbine is uses AC power, but what we're trying to do here is force the EcoFlow to use its solar charging capacity or capability to use hydro. Solar power is DC, direct current. Generators that spin in this type of situation are mostly AC. So what you need to do is take the AC alternating current power, turn it to DC, and then you can just connect it straight in. So it might sound complicated, but you've got generator, AC, cable, box that changes it to DC. And then what it's kind of tricking the box to think it is, is it's receiving a solar input. So that then runs straight to those cables that I showed you that are on the back of the EcoFlow, and then it plugs straight in. So it's actually a fairly simple process, but um, while I was thinking about this, I was like, wow, if, if you're spending all this money on a hydro system to plug it into this and it just doesn't work, like what, what if there's some kind of um, 
compatibility issue? What if there's, there's something that just stops you doing it? So I had to do a few tests and took a bit of a risk to see if it would work and it does work, but you have to get your head over how you're going to get the EcoFlow to recognize the power coming from the hydro turbine, which is different to the type of power coming from solar and then get it to charge from that. So that's how the power works. Um, I think in a bit we'll go over the limitations with this because you can do it, but it, there are limitations. Okay, so I know I've got a bit of a special use case here. Why would you be charging? Um, why would you be charging this EcoFlow Delta with hydro? Because if you've got a proper setup, you're going to be using a proper inverter, proper battery bank. That's just how most people will do it. They'll be using solar. You can see the solar bank behind me there. Um, and that works well, but can you see behind me? The sun's not above that hill. It's 11.35 in the morning and that sun won't come up until about 12.15. It then sets behind that hill at about two o'clock. That means I have two hours of sun, and you know I've got a lot of solar down there, but it, it just won't it just won't kick it. So I know not many people are going to be charging this with hydro. We're using it in the meantime to stop gap infill um, between just we turned up here and there's nothing here. So we just we're living in a static caravan for now. We needed some power. So we uh, got the EcoFlow because you just put it on the floor, plug stuff in and it just works. Um, we are upgrading our system, but in the meantime, we were just starting the generator every day. It was running twice. We were using a lot of petrol to run that generator um, because the solar just wasn't, the time wasn't good enough here. And we have a lot of cloud cover as well. So that's why we're using hydro rather than solar um, for this specific use case. But the point I'm trying to make here perhaps the thing that might be useful for more people is that you can trick the EcoFlow Delta Pro into using any power source. If you can convert it to DC and you've got the correct voltage and amperage, you can put anything in. I think that's what this proves. So wind, you want to get on a spin bike and put a generator on a spin bike and start charging it that way. Uh, other types of wa you know, water wheels, um, any kind of power generation you can think of, you could get the EcoFlow to charge from that without any modifications to the box. You just have to plug it in and make sure it's the correct power, amperage and um, current type, and then you're pretty good to go. So the challenge with the EcoFlow is dump loading. And what dump loading is, is it's dumping excess power somewhere else, because if the battery gets to 100%, Hydro and wind can have its bearings damaged. So what happens is, um, so with solar, for example, when the battery's full, solar's just happy ticking away because there's no moving parts. But with anything that spins, if there's no load on it, it runs away, like it spins too fast and that can overheat the bearings and um, damage the bearings or, or cause other kinds of problems. So it's really important with hydro and wind to have somewhere to put the excess power when the battery is charged to 100%. So that's called dump loading. So when the battery gets to 100%, you need to then keep using the power from the hydro or the wind turbine, and you want to put it somewhere else. Now, if you're doing this properly, like we're going to be doing in a couple of videos with our new inverters and things, you have that wired in. So the inverter you're using either dump loads internally, or you have a controller that dump loads externally. Usually you put that power to a, a water heater, um, but you can't do that with the EcoFlow. So what we're doing at the minute is we've got one of these timers and we've set that up to a two kilowatt oil filled radiator. Um, and it's a bit of trial and error. You have to kind of figure out how much power you've got coming in, how long it takes to charge. And the EcoFlow app is really good for that because it tells you how long in time is left before the battery's full. So you can kind of look at that and go, when are we likely to boil the kettle next? Like overnight, for example, is the big one. Um, so I leave this on for about an hour overnight and it's got a fan and a heater, which just turn on to uh, use the power. And 
It's just to protect your devices. And by devices, I mean your generation devices, your wind or your solar. So that's stump loading. You can get wireless ones of these, and I would recommend them. EcoFlow even make one, which if the app's working, you can automatically tell it to send power to an external device when the battery reaches a certain percentage. However, the app's not that great. Sometimes it doesn't work. And I've heard people on the internet say they can't set up automation. So EcoFlow do have a solution that could be used for dump loading, but I'm not sure if I would trust it. And also with wireless ones, I'm, if it fails, your turbine will be ruined. You'll have to replace the bearings, other things may melt. So you're putting all of your trust in this device. And for me, a manual one is a lot less likely to go wrong than um, a wireless digital one. So that's why we're going with the manual one. But I have been up several times at two in the morning going in to adjust this because the power has changed. And with a wireless one, uh, you could just do that from your phone, couldn't you? So there are benefits to the wireless ones. But I really just don't want to blow a turbine up. Right, so that's that's it for that's it for can you charge an EcoFlow Delta Pro with a hydro turbine or wind, I suppose. Kind of overview of it is take the power, put it to an AC-DC rectifier that turns it into the correct power for the EcoFlow, plug it in using the solar plugs, and make sure you've got some MC4, I think I remember now, connectors to connect that to the back. Make sure you're within the, or less than, 13 amps, 150 volts, so that you don't damage the EcoFlow, and then dump load. And if you do all that, I think you're okay. And after some deep diving, I've actually found that on some websites that sell the EcoFlow, it does say in the kind of small print that you can charge it by wind or hydro, or perhaps it doesn't say hydro because that's quite specialist, but it does say wind, which means that they kind of, they don't sit on their main page that you can charge it that way, but it is possible. So there we go. If you like this kind of content, come join us in the next one. It'd be nice to see you there. We'll see you then.